Each of us has a mission in life, a role to fulfill. I didn't get the chance to complete mine. And you can't cross over until you do. You don't even remember it, but <laughs> Lifeblood was where we took um, Amazon High and cut it into an episode, cut it down into an episode right. of Xena. Right. Xena and Gabrielle go to visit the Amazons. They're going to bestow upon Xena's uh, uh, daughter uh, Gabrielle's right of cast to become an Amazon. So it's basically nonstop dancing. <laughs> Of Amazons, <laughs> and intercut with um, Amazon sex. High. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sex. <laughs> intercut with Amazon High. And violence. Right, right. Uh, okay. So, um, so I didn't even I didn't really have any part of that except that I directed the Amazon High stuff. So you didn't direct the Lifeblood. No. no. But you had to get credit because it was one minute more. Oh yeah, there's a whole DJ. There's a whole there, yeah. ball of wax there. So that I think officially, even though mm -hmm. you. Got, got a, credit for it. Yeah. I know that you got credit for yeah, it. Yeah, but I it, didn't really. You didn't. couldn't tell you what the story is or anything. I'm hard put to know how the hell you got that into it. Uh, it was... <laughs> you kind of had Selma, oh, you kind of had her in it. The yeah. Hero. Oh, she was. Yeah. So it was how Ooh. the, it was the beginning of the Amazons, how they started. It was the ultimate kind of tale. The Amazons are all hopped up to go get vengeance for their slain leaders. And eventually, Xena convinces them that uh, through these flashbacks or through these mm. hallucinations mm. that they had that of Amazon High that um, vengeance is not the way, which was the wow. message in Amazon High. Right. It was a real stretch. We were trying to save money and it became a huge, <laughs> huge nightmare. <laughs> Send us from the land beyond time and death, the Atma, our savior, our greatest warrior. <laughs> Amazon High. Well, that was a. What would you call? Well, it was a Stone Age. Stone Age story. Basically, 20th century teenage girl gets catapulted back to the Stone Age where she meets a bunch of Amazons who eat horses because they don't know what else to do with them. Mm -hmm. That's how I explain it. And she teaches them that you can ride them. And in being able to ride the horses, they are able to defeat the bad cannibal men who um, were stomping around being bad cannibals. Wait, if you guys don't ride the swift ones when you catch them, what do you do with them? We prepare them for the ceremonial dinner. You eat horses? You're not supposed to eat horses. Horses aren't food. I can't believe this. And uh, they have this huge uh, battle, which was amazing to shoot. I never forget and shooting that was great because that was literally, you know, with something like 60 people on horseback and uh, 80 guys on the ground and, you know, a crane and a camera on a track and another camera. And we did three days of shooting. There were something like 480 slates in the battle sequence. It was very, very complicated. I'm forever running into guys on rivers fishing down in New Zealand go, hey, I was in the road one of those horses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, and, and I, I, yeah, the end was, um, the ending of that, is about uh, yeah, revenge is not is not the way. Always Some the way. Sara is going to ride off and yeah. get her vengeance. Daniel yeah. Cormack and that's right. Claudia ba Black reins yeah. her back in. That's right. And we had uh, Selma Blair played the the lead, and uh, Carl Urban, who's in um, the Lord of the Rings, he played one of the young cannibals. Did it quite well, actually. Very funny. He has this amazing fight with uh, 
with um, Danielle. Danielle really in the cave. good fight. It's they, actually they, in Lifeblood. We took all the oh, best okay. pieces. We took the giant battle at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, That battle was some piece of work, man. That was a really... Uh, the strategy to shoot it was... Because everybody... Not only was it a big battle, it actually had... Um, everybody had a payoff. <laughs> Right at the beginning, I don't know if you even know this, right at the beginning, I said to the people who did the horses, this is what I need the horses to do. And I wanted two horses, it was in the script, to ri rise together like that and, and do this. And, um, and one of them guys falls off something. Yes, we can do that. And they couldn't. They, they couldn't. could not do that. And by the time I got, I was so frustrated. And, uh, so if you look at it, it has to be, it's cut together. It's, to me, it's clunky, but because it's just piece after piece after piece after piece to try and fake it. You know, within, with camera cuts, and it's never exactly what you want. It's always better if you can film it. So, um, but yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a great thing to work on. It was uh, a lot of fun. Ah, uh, that problem with horses and stunties and yeah. riders and where that division fell oh, yeah. haunted me to this movie we d just shot down there. So really? One, where somebody shows up and they're to fall off the horse, but they don't know how to ride a horse. You go, well, it needs to ride into frame yeah, for yeah. you to be thrown off. Well, you, you go, go. Well, I don't ride horses, but I know how to take a fall. Go, oh. One thing that we did develop in that, and I was amazed actually, because um, of course the guys stand there, all the cannibal guys, you know, oh, 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 stand there, and they think the Amazons are there, and then they hear this noise and they turn and galloping around the corner, could you, could you, you see them all coming on. And um, we wanted the impact point, and um, these guys were great. The horses, they, they, they would gallop up, and they just miss the stunty who had a hand that would hit the horse's, what do you call that piece of the horse? The, the, Front, the breast, the, the yeah. breast, but yeah. So they'd get a little purchase there, and they're flying back. And because of the f the depth of focus, you, it looks as though they're getting absolutely mown down. <laughs> but to get the horses to actually not waver was tricky, you know, and and. The, in that film, the professional horse wranglers were like, oh, no, you'll never do that, mate. No, no, whatever. But some of the local guys, oh, no, I can make a horse do that. <laughs> and so we got these local guys, and that's why you've got those guys. Right. Because they, yeah, we'll make the horse do that. Just bloody give it a, give it a hiding or something, and the horse does it, you know. And, you, you know, there was a little bit of a, uh, because the wranglers were like, you know, really, yeah. Pissed. You shouldn't be treating horses in the... No. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had to get it, uh. you know, so... Amazon High, um, we actually sold then to make into a series. And I was at the syndicated TV um, convention, NAPTI, and um, I saw Lost World and Beastmaster and all these other shows wow. set in that time coming. And suddenly I went all weak in the knees and went, oh my God, I'll just be lost in that clutter. And um, the people at that time at Universal had been interested in trying to find a way to crack syndicating out in the afternoons. And they kept saying half hours are the only thing that syndicate out between like 5 and 8 o'clock at night at mm -hmm. those prime times. So we all kind of hatched this plan of doing two half hours. And Amazon High then got turned into Cleopatra 2525. And Jack as a companion piece, well, the two of them were not companion pieces, unfortunately, and, um, mm. but um, mm. so be it. But that's what happened to Amazon High is I got cold feet that um, uh, it wasn't covering new enough ground. Hmm. Makes sense, I guess. Mm. I often wonder, hey, if we had just gone and done mm. Amazon High, which uh, would have been our version of CSI New York or something, would it have lived on, you know? And you, you just yeah. never know. You never know. You never yeah. know.